Hey, what's up guys? And yeah, I'm back with something new. And there's also something I want to talk about, so listen up guys. First of all, I'm going to be giving you what if Naruto was neglected and broken and became a daimyo. Yes guys, he's going to be treated horribly. Until he's going to aspire to be something greater than even a ninja. To become a ruler, a lord. As of the other voice that I've been using... I've been tremendously busy in the outside world guys, yes the real world, so I've been not been able to post that much on the other channels, so I've been giving you guys those to keep you entertained while I know I won't be posting, but I've sorted most of those things out, so now I'm back guys, and I realize I don't have much series ongoing on this channel, so here is something to start it back up guys, but yes I'm back, so expect more of my voice coming in guys, so just sit back relax and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. There was many things that medical chakra could do, from healing minor stabbing and reconstructing an entire skeletal system, going even further as to heal entire limbs back to functionality. It is widely rumored that medics, if they go deeper into their profession, they would be able to regenerate from fatal wounds. Most believe that this was for one Senju Sinade and that diamond on her forehead. Of her achieving such medical greatness, she was known as the world best medical ninja after all. But thankfully though, there wasn't any reason for her to demonstrate what the diamond was for. True, medical ninjutsu was a great branch of ninjutsu that all ninjas had great respect for. But there were some things that it could not do, like raise the dead, or permanently curing brain tumors, or even healing fatal spine injuries. Naruto was one of those people that medical ninjutsu has not been able to help. You see, the problem happened at his birth. 12 years ago when the Kayubi, the powerful steel beast that currently roams the earth, was sealed inside of him. But before it was sealed, just as Minato and Kushina had jumped in the way, using their own body to protect their precious child from the Kayubi's claw, the Kayubi's nail had pushed a bit further and scratched Naruto's right thigh, pushing out a small portion of its vile chakra inside of Naruto, undeveloped and growing chakra system. Popular worldview say that demon chakra or yokai, no matter how small it is, is terribly poison. It was tainted. However, the tail beasts were not demons. The ninjas nowadays have no idea where the beasts came from. They had no idea about the Jubi or the Sage of Six Path. So they saw the tail beasts as demons and they call it demonic chakra, which it was not. At that moment, Naruto was in a world of pain and he was too young to understand what pain was. It was right then that Minato had used the seal matrix to seal the beast inside his son. Instead of using the standard Uzumaki sealing method that Mito Uzumaki had used to seal the bitch inside of herself and also seal it inside of the next container, which was Kushina Uzumaki, the tainted chakra had taken over Naruto's entire right leg. And just before the fox could take it back, it was too late. Naruto's whole right leg had become useless. It was something that the Kayubi would both regret and be thankful that he had done when the blonde had come to ask him in the future. Regret, because he was the reason why Naruto would never be a shinobi. And thankful because the boy will find something that will make him far better than any shinobi to ever walk this earth. The bad leg, outwardly, it looked healthy, like its normal half except it was slightly paler, but Naruto could not move it, it was lifeless. 
Since the day he could remember, he had been confined to a wheelchair, and he had been a sitting duck since he could talk. The villagers, not knowing whose son he was, capitalized on the fact that he could not run away from them. They took their anger and rage out on him. He was a reminder of what they lost. All the child could do was beg for mercy, but none was given. On his fourth birthday, Naruto was kicked out of the orphanage. He literally had to crawl to shelter, and he had to last a month before the old and very naive Hokage would rescue him. The only voice he had was a voice in his head that proclaimed itself to be the Kayube, the most powerful of all tail beasts. He had been introduced to the Kayube involuntarily when he was forced to eat moldy bread and drink old milk. It was the fox that kept on telling him not to give up. If the fox was never there, Naruto would have submitted to the weight of the world, the crushing blows of everything around him. He would have broken down. They say that everyone that's reached to a certain level where all nations knew of their existence has an origin story. Naruto's origin story was that he opened a book. Well, it wasn't exactly a book. More of a single paper in a beat up paper bag. He had just celebrated his fifth birthday by himself. The Hokage was too busy to visit. The silver haired dog mass, wearing Anvu, had stopped coming as well. And even that little cat with a red ribbon on its ear had stopped visit as well. The only person that was there that was stuck with him was the Kayube. As the child was about to go to sleep, something was thrown right through his window by a junkie villager who picked up the first thing that he found which was the paperback book and threw it. Naruto slowly picked it up. He did not have the energy to yell at the man. It was like Kami had sent him an apology for how messed up his life had been. The book contained only a picture and a page long paragraph. He was at least grateful that the third had taught him how to read and write before he barely visited anymore. The picture though was not a picture, it was a seal. He took his time marveling over how intricate it looked as he rubbed his finger over the black marking. He was not sure what it was back then, but this was a basic Funjuta seal for storing items. As he read over the paragraph and something in his mind clicked, Q said Naruto, his nickname for the fox, what do you think? The living natural disaster was also reading and writing. He looked at the Shinigami seal and he knew that he would never be able to break out as he shrugged. From what I remember, Fun Jutsu is a very underappreciated branch of Jutsu. The possibilities are endless, I'm certain, that with enough dedication. At hearing that, Naruto quickly chimed in. I will be able to walk, he said, finishing the sentence as he looked back at the seal. I don't know Q, he said. This looked pretty hard. As Naruto traced his finger over the seal. This fun something doesn't seem like much. But you did say that it was underappreciated. And it has endless possibilities. You know what? I'll see what I can do. If it's too hard, I'll stop, said Naruto. The Kayubi rolled his eyes as he proceeded to settle up for the night. While Naruto struggled up to the window. Directly next to his bed. As he waved his hand through the window, frantically, an Anvil wearing a mantis mask appeared. As Naruto looked up towards him, Please, Anvusen, can you get me more on this stuff? Please, Naruto asked. The man was about to jump away, but Naruto gripped onto his leg. Please, he said. As he tried to do what he saw most orphans do, when they plead to get more food, as he pouted and widened his eyes. As Naruto truly underestimate the power that his kick puppy dog look had on people. The man sigh as he flicked Naruto arms away as he jumped through the window. Minutes later though he returned with a scroll that was the size of Naruto arm. Beginner level kid. When you finish let me know. As Naruto eyes were transfixed on the scroll as he took it and start to go through it. Mandus looked towards the boy before. He placed down another empty scroll in the bed, along with an ink and brush. As he was gone, Naruto was not aware as he was salivated over, 
the beginner scroll for phone duty users. His childish mind, a whirlwind of ideas and possibilities, from what the childish author wrote about what seal masters could do with the seals. It said that Funjutsu could seal away entire buildings and create a solid barrier when needed. He filled in the blanks of what the person did not write, like it could seal away Bejus, and it could possibly alter reality slightly, not by too much, but in the user's favor. If Funjutsu could do this, then there was still hope for him to be a ninja. If he could invent a seal fast enough before the academy started, then he could be a ninja. However, realistically speaking, it was impossible. One of the signature jutsu that the Fort Akagi used was outlined in the scroll. It took the man years, many years, to truly fully master that technique. Naruto knew that he should prepare himself for disappointment. After all, it's not like he was that special. There was one thing that he wasn't aware of though. Fuinjutsu was in the Uzumaki's blood and he was at Uzumaki. Sleep left him that night and the other night. Night after night, Naruto barely got any sleep. Months passed as he go through the scroll. As Naruto was so dedicated to master the scroll, he set aside one hour from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. to get some sleep then. Other than that, he studied. It was just for necessity. Everything else was focused on the scroll. After three months, he was able to make a successful storage scroll. That was the most happiest he had ever been as he saw the stick being sealed away and unsealed. It was his creation. It was done by him, his own hands. He did not even have to ask the mantis Anvu for another scroll. As he came back to find a bigger scroll on his bed, little did he know that it was a third Okage who was giving him these scrolls through the Anvu. The scrolls were coming from the joint, Uzumaki and Namikaze, sealing vault of the Fort Akagi and his wife. It was said to be passed on to their child if they ever met their demise. It was Hiruzen's way of keeping Naruto mind off his permanent predicament and a way for Naruto to also be able to defend himself as well. However, when Naruto reached 11 years old, Hiruzen got the shock of his life. The boy had been making progress so fast that when he turned 11, he was already a level 8 seal master. Besides the regular studies and the regular training scrolls, Naruto made sure that he kept his primary goal at the front fort of his mind. He cracked seals and separated them down to their base so he knew every inter, combination, twist, every turn. He tested them on the dead rats in his apartment hoping for their leg to at least twitch or make a single move. His breakthrough finally came when the dead rat scampered around his apartment like it was being electrocuted. The creature was dead but the lower half was moving and that was exactly what he was searching for. As the rat was running around, Naruto finger tapped the table periodically as it seemed to slow down and froze for half a second before it continued to move madly. He called it his force movement seal. Its inspiration, surprisingly, was gotten from a barrier seal. The barrier seal was powered by the user's shocker. If the person stopped the flow, the barrier would crumble and break away. But if the flow was continuously flown to the barrier, it could withstand the full brunt of numerous lightning jutsus. The force movement seal functioned the same way as well. One part would be placed on his useless leg, the other one would be in the palm of his hand. Though it was still unfinished, the seal on his leg was the same. Chalker to the main points in his legs and the muscles and simulate movement and the one in his hand was inspired by the walkie talkies that he saw the villagers children play with. The seal in his palm is where he would channel his chalker and it would immediately go to the leg seal. The only thing remained was to add in a chakra store in case he ever forgot to channel chakra and to make sure that he did not put too much strain on him. As he controlled the rat to come over towards him, he scanned over its body for any strained muscles or any wounds. Success! Naruto said as he covered his mouth in joy. He was giggling. No problem whatsoever. No better time than the present. Don't overdo it, kid. The Kayubi spoke up. 
No worries, Q. I got this, said Naruto. As he draw the seal over his leg, and the one in his palm as well. He was finally done. Here goes nothing, he thought to himself. As he channeled a trickle of chalker to warm the leg up. He felt it twitch, and again, and again, Naruto scrambled to his knees and hands to push himself up. He fell down. He grunted in frustration as he pushed off the ground. He stumbled and smashed into the wall. He tried to get his leg back under control. However, it was rebelling against him as he starts to kick around. As Naruto was surprised, it was the both of them. The left leg kicked a hole right through his wall, and the other one kicked his only table down. He reduced the chakra that he was sending as he felt his legs crumble once again and he started up once again as he started to walk. He started to walk. He felt like a newborn baby as he did not really have anywhere to go. So he spent that week learning how to properly walk. And then when that week was over, he made his way to the office. Harrison was shocked. N Naruto? In the flesh, said Naruto. The last time Harrison saw Naruto, he was a short, five-year-old boy with dazzling blonde hair and healthy, bronze skin. But now, Naruto looked rather unhealthy. His hair was dull as it flopped weakly on his head. He noticed a jag on the edges as he assumed that Naruto has been cutting his own hair. And his skin looked pale and veiny. His skin was pale and malnourished. And his clothes looked like they had not been washed in a very long time. From the horrified torn on his clothing, Harrison could see the marks on Naruto's body, the stab wounds, the scars. You'd have to be blind to not notice them. And he was sure if he checked over Naruto's body, he would find more. In summary, he looked the direct opposite of how one in his lineage was to be treated. Harrison held his face as he restrained the tears that wanted to fall from his eyes. How could it have gotten this bad? He was the one to send the training scrolls to Naruto through one of his ninjas, but he had not personally checked upon him, not even through his crystal ball. He has failed. Yes, he failed Naruto, and he knew it. He lifted his head. Even though Naruto hid it, he saw distrust in those eyes. Hello? Are you still there, Hokage-sama? Another reason is to show that he had failed. Naruto used to call him Grandfather, Honorable Grandfather. But it's Grandfather all the same. He put his best game face on as he noticed that Naruto was standing. Pretty neat, huh? said Naruto. Ha, how? Hiruzen said. There was this really nice ninja that gave me this scroll on Funjutsu. It was so interesting. I had to learn it. The level of mastery that he has to have to create a sea like this. It's amazing, Hiruzen thought, as he cleared his throat. Well done, Naruto-kan, he said. However, Naruto's shoulders sagged in disappointment. Is there a problem, he said. J I mean, Hokage-sama. Can I sign up for the academy? I may be a bit too old, but with hard work and dedication, I can. I'm sorry, Naruto-kan, Hiruzen said, cut him off. You can't be admitted. As Naruto looked at him. Why not? He raised his tone. Here is a wave for the cat mass envoy to stand down after the boy outbursts. Technically, you still cannot walk. But I can. Look at me, said Naruto. As he stomped around the room. But he stumbled after two step. Naruto cursed under his breath. As he pulled himself up and started to walk more, showing him, see? I can walk, he said. I can see the strain that it has on you. It's only a little. I can get used to it, said Naruto. The answer is still no. You're very unhealthy. And you're very weak. He visibly saw the respect that the boy still had for him fall out of his eyes in a trickle of tears. And whose fault is that? Sir Toby sighed. Naruto. Answer me, said Naruto. Who's to blame? As he brought his hands up to wipe his tears, I spent the better part of seven years trying to find a way how I could walk so I can finally be a ninja and you won't even give me a chance 
to prove myself. I was just being honest, Harrison said. I can't have any of my ninjas going out there with already dangerous injuries. What if that seal get washed off by a water user? Naruto kept quiet. See, Harrison said. I can make it more durable, said Naruto. I just need a bit more time. The answer is still no. I can register you for the civilian school. No, I want to be a ninja, said Naruto. Naruto, I'm going to say this once, only once. You can never be a ninja. You can never be a ninja. You can never be a ninja. The words echo inside of Naruto's mind. You can never be a ninja. Naruto's face became stony. There was no emotion, no tears. He just walked and left. Harrison Hart was berating him for his harsh words, but it was the only way. With Naruto, I told you that he would not agree. Yeah, well good for you, said Naruto. That wasn't what I meant, kid, the Kayubi said. As he had not seen Naruto this defeated in a very long time, his eyes were glassy and his hair even seemed more dull and weak. Naruto looked towards the ceiling. As his face was blank, as he looked up, his shirt was off as he was tracing the latest scar that he had, right near to his belly button, as he wondered why had he not set up barrier seals and alarm seals around his apartment. Maybe it was because of a childish hope that the people would one day see that he was not bad. He chuckled dryly at that thought. They will never accept me, he thought to himself. Kid, the Kayuba said, you are right. You're always right, said Naruto. They will never accept me. As he rubbed his face and sat up. As he pumped some chalk into the seal as he stumbled towards. His table in his room. Where there was a lot of funjutsu undone. Seals on top of it. What should I do, Q? Naruto asked. I don't know why you keep on asking me for instructions, kid. I'm not the best. I'd give an advice. This was not really true, though. It was a fox that pushed him into studying Funjutsu, and the great beast was always there whenever he needed a pick-me-up. It was a fox that was always there for him. Always. As Naruto knelt down beside the table, looking over the papers. I don't know what to do with myself anymore. The only reason I invented the seal was to be a ninja, and you saw how that turned out. Then prove them wrong. Make something out of nothing. What do you mean, said Naruto. To be honest kid, I can't stand this place. Kanoha, you can't feel it yet but so do you. Naruto did not raise any complaint as he just listened. You have potential, I can see it. But this place is limiting you. What should I do? He already know what the beast was about to suggest. But he just wanted to hear him say it out loud. I propose that we make our own paradise. Naruto laughed at that. That's crazy thought, he said. I'm being serious here. If this place won't see you for who you are, then either go somewhere else or make your own place. I don't want to see wasted potential. Assuming I agree with you, how do you suppose I leave? I barely know how to walk. The great beast chuckled darkly after hearing what Naruto had said. Baby steps, remember, I said to you all those years ago, in Funjutsu, the possibilities are endless. Naruto blinked slowly as it dawned on him. Comprehension, he understood. Ideas for more seals popping up in his head. He could not stop himself as he picked up a random sheet of paper and started to write all over it and join a seal that would soon propel him to be known from all over the nation in the future. He made a wrong stroke. He threw the paper away as he started back over. Once he was done, he walked over to a pile of dirty clothes. As he slipped the seal underneath it, he shuffled a bit away before drawing a seal on his stomach that came together like an X. Before he proceeded to channel chalker into it, the seal that Naruto had drawn was a fractured variation of his four seal movement. He removed the limiter on the original seal so it could make the whole body move under a constant flow of chakra. The difference was, it wasn't his body that he wanted to use. The X on the Kayubi containment seal was a way so that he could channel chakra. 
His aim was to extract the Kyube essence and hopefully its chakra as well and have it on the outside. He called it the Force Animation Seal. It worked, kind of. He channeled his chakra instead of the Fox chakra as there was a small orange swirl that appeared. It released chakra that came from his belly and moved towards a bundle of clothing. And then the pain came as Naruto grit his teeth. He drove his nails into the ground as he bit down hard, tearing his nails across the floor. And finally it relented. The dirty clothing started to bubble. The center then started to slowly rotate and spun before rising up to the same height that Naruto would stand if he was standing. The clothing then tightened and came together as Naruto could make out a left chest, then a belly button. Malnourished arms flopped out where arms were supposed to be. This process continued until the head popped out of the shoulders. It was wrapped up like a brown, sandy turban. Red, shining eyes could be seen beneath the cloth as Naruto hesitated before he reached out towards his creation. The creation proceeded to cough. N N Naruto Sama. Its voice was gravelly and dangerous. It flexed his hands in front of its face. It noticed Naruto trying to get up. It quickly got to his side and helped him up, showing an impressive amount of strength, given that its arms looked like they were sticks. As it placed Naruto in the wheelchair, as Naruto watched as a cloth creation shuffled around the room, Touching whatever it got its eye on. Kayubi, what have I done? I cannot sense your dark half. Well, most of it. You must have sucked it out instead of me, the Kayubi said. What I don't understand is why oh, call you master. Darker half do not refer to anyone as their master. But darker half inspire to reach a light and take over it. I think he call you master because technically... You have taken it into the light, but it does not want to take over it. I cannot sense any ill will towards you from it. It's a version of you but without any ambition. Naruto Darker half punch a hole right through. The picture of the third Okage that Naruto forgot that he had. It also seemed to think what you think as well. Naruto processed this information while still supplying chakra to his darker self. This wasn't what he wanted. Not in the least. He did not even know that he had a darker half. But he was not one to waste the opportunity. As he whistled. To gain the other Naruto attention. What should I name you? The cloth creation scrambled over towards him and fell to its knees. Showing great respect to Naruto. Naruto Sama should name me he said. Fine then. I'll call you Deku the dark one. Excellent name Naruto Sama. Deku said. What should Deku do for Naruto Sama? I want to know what you can do, he said, waving his hand as Deku ran over towards his bed and received the blanket as he dropped it on top of Naruto's lap. Rather neatly, as Naruto draped it over his legs, let's find an empty training ground. Time skip. Deku was special. There was no limit to its strength, and it found it extremely hard to control. It tried to pet a rabbit and end up caving in the rabbit's skull by accident. He tried to stroke the bark of a tree and he tore out a deep portion of it. He already had plans in his head to control Deku's strength and transfer it to other aspects of his body. The Dark One did not have any chakra network. He had a belly filled with chakra and thick cylinders that spread out across his belly that moved towards his legs and arms and head. But his chakra network seemed so underdeveloped. It was so underdeveloped and wasteful. Naruto knew that he had a large sum of chakra, even larger than the Hokage, but the creation needed so much chakra that it took a lot out of him. He was a Uzumaki and a Jinjuliki, and he was tired. If he was anyone else, it would have killed him in the first half hour, but Naruto network was still growing, as it was purifying the Kayubi's chakra and making Naruto network larger and larger. Deku was incredibly fast and strong. He was sure that he could face off with elite Jonins 
The problem was it didn't have any fighting style. It simply punched and kicked randomly. But Deku could read though. He told him that. It could twist and turn its body in very painful ways. He could create sharp sticks out of any part of his body that were made from the cloth. They were strong but Naruto deduced that a well-timed blow could shatter them. He also had an amazing memory. He could remember whatever you told him down to the last detail. It could also perform any task you give it to the best of his ability. The only problem was it's still uncontrollable strength. Naruto's first order was for it to spy on a chunin training and memorize everything that he or she did, whether it be taijutsu, genjutsu, shuriken jutsu, or stealth, anything was fine and since it did not need any food or nourishments, only chakra to supply it, it could stay and observe for days and days. A week of observation and Deku came back, he wrote all that he learned on scrolls, adding drawings if necessary. The handwriting was perfect and legible, so that he could read it. He commanded the Dark One to learn it and go back and learn more. The observation took Deku three months before he was proficient in anything. When he was sure that Deku was stealthy enough, he started to command him to read scrolls from the library on all ninja aspects. The Dark One read so fast it took him two minutes to finish a scroll filled with D rank jutsus. As Naruto commanded him to learn other things, carpentry, masonry, mining, politics. There was only so much he could learn from a book, so he personally took him deep in the forest to cut down trees and craft the simplest of things. As Naruto had Deku carve out an adult skeleton frame out of wood, pebbles to use as joints, wires. As Naruto had used a scroll and add chakra into it as a sort of battery with the way Deku feed on chakra, so the battery would be commonly used. The battery was like Deku's brain, almost limitless, there was a limit, but it will take a lot, a lot of chakra to reach it. He put the scroll safely into the chest cavity of the wooden skeleton. As he then summoned back Deku once again, the cloth wrapping around the wooden material, as Naruto dressed him in Anvu, standard clothing. A long sleeve shirt and pants, pitch black. He did not need a mask to cover his identity though. The only thing that could be seen was his red eyes. The stakes that he could create now were made of wood and stone. As he had to remember to tell Deku to steal marble and diamond if possible, so that he can create stakes from those materials when he blamed them inside his chakra. Baby steps though, baby steps. The new skeleton frame, it reduced his speed though, so they took a month to work on that to get his speed back up. They also had to look into chakra control exercises, as they had to reduce how much chakra it take to do one jutsu. The dark one could compress his chakra so small, it could be equal to the size of a baseball. That was how much he could suppress his power. It was enough for an average shinobi to not sense him, but a well controlled sensor would sense him. He had drawn several limiter seals on the Dark One's body so the chakra drain would limit and his muscles would develop even more. While he was doing that, Naruto was also getting deeper into Funjutsu, reaching up to level 9. As Naruto augmented his wheelchair, he written custom made seals on it and removed the wheels. The purpose of the seals was that he could hover off the ground with accumulated wing chakra from his chakra network. It was not too fast but he was not too focused on speed, more on efficiency. When the Jennings from the academy graduated, Deku was also ready to face the world. Naruto had Deku create shadow clones to scout outside Konoha walls. The news was always the same, nothing of importance. His plan was to take over an existing village and then take over the country or he would create his own village and take over the country. As Naruto grew more adventurous and sent Deku out to the nearest village to see if it had the qualities that he was looking for, it did. The land of Wave was not a village, it was an island country, but it might as well be a large hobble situated on a semi-wasteland. 
The people were dirt poor. Crime was at an all-time high. They were being oppressed by external force and their daimyo was too weak to do anything about it. When he got Deku reports, he smiled. It had been a few months since he sent his creation to go and liberate the country, transferring half of the control to Deku, who had specific information to let them know that he was not Joe leader, until Naruto was ready to come out and claim his position. If Deku perform his mission down to the letter, he will soon have a country under his grasp. Naruto Sama want Deku to go to the wave country and set it free. Keep the country for Naruto Sama until Naruto Sama is ready to come out publicly. Deku will go and Deku will do as Naruto Sama instructed because Deku is for Naruto Sama and Naruto Sama only. This was the creation thoughts as it sped out of Kanoha. The only thing that could be seen was a deep shadow as it bounced off trees and rocks until it reached a port of the wave country. He hummed to himself as he took a step on the water, nodding to himself when he did not sink, as he sped off to where the daimyo and the person that was trying to control the village was. From all the books on politics that he had been reading, he needed to end the threat before going to the daimyo. Still, before he could do either, he had to get the people of Wave ready for the changes that were about to happen. The village and the country had the potential to be one of the richest and wealthiest places if the government handled it right. The water was a good place to trade and it also provided them security against other invaders. Unlike the first time that he was here, he was not stealthy because he was trying to prepare the people. So he was surprised when one of the members of the Seven Swordsmen attacked him. He ducked and slipped into the tree line as he had heard the whipping of the blade through the sky. As he waited for he or she to show himself, Zabuza appeared on the hilt of the blade. He blinked in confusion when he did not see the corpse with no head. Seeing that he had sent his blade with such force to slice off, whoever he had saw, he jumped down as he pulled his weapon out of the tree. Come out, wherever you are. Deku assumed that he was one of the tyrant, hired gun. So he will have to go through him before getting to Gato. Not one for theatrics, he blur forward and shoulder tackled Zabuza, only for Zabuza to burst into water. As he twists and leaped off the ground, Zabuza blade smashing where he once stood. As Deku flipped and landed on his feet, I have to say, stranger, you are fast. Let's get this over with quickly, shall we? Who are you working for and why are you here? Deku had thrown himself into the brush, once again vanishing. Zabuza brought his blade up and blocked several powerful water bullets that slammed into the side of his blade. He was pushed back as Deku appeared behind him and drive a stake right through him but he burst into water. Deku then ducked as a blade passed over his head. He turned and twisted his body as Zabuza's blade slammed into the ground. He stepped in Zabuza's guard and jumped upwards. Zabuza raised his blade though, causing Deku to flip off it. Now stuck in mid-ear, Zabuza was intent to cut him in half, but Deku twists and landed as he flipped away. As he shoot forward the moment his feet touched the ground, driving a stake toward the swordsman, Zabuza was surprised by the speed. As he swapped with a log, Deku split it in half. He hummed in displeasure before going through hand signs as he pumped, as little chakra as he needed. Wing style, great wing breakthrough. He blasted a high pressurized wing into the forest. Zabuza slammed his blade in the ground as he was forced to hold on. Deku made a water clone. The clone sunk into the ground and shot right from underneath Zabuza, who had enough time to twist his blade and disperse it. But the real Deku slammed right into him, knocking him to the ground. He raised his fist as he started to rain down blows on Zabuza. That was when four needles stabbed him in the back, where his tankers of points should have been. But his chakra network was still too undeveloped so it only jammed into his arms and lower back. The ice needles lodging into his muscles, slowing him down enough for Zabuza to kick him away. As Deku frowned as he flexed, the needles flying out. He created two stakes and blocked the incoming onslaught of ice that erupted forward towards him. He made numerous water clones and sent them to fish the ice user out. 
as he turned his gaze towards the injured swordsman. Deku attacked him once again, his speed seeming to be faster as Sabuza was being knocked back. After receiving such hard blows to the face, the man was staggering until his back was against a tree. Deku summoned a stake and pinned him to the tree as he broke his legs with two swift powerful kicks. He stepped back to marvel at what he had done. His clones came out of the forest, two of them. One of them had the unconscious hunter Nin on his shoulder. As he walked over towards the original, Miss Hunter Ninja looks and sound too young to be a real Hunter Ninja. I assume that he worked for Zabuza. The other clone reached over and picked up Zabuza's blade and handed it to Deku. What should we do? We need to find out Gato's location. He turned towards Zabuza. Tell us or else. As Zabuza spat and growled, you don't have the guts. On the contrary, he flipped over Haku and stepped on his shoulder as he grabbed his arm. I don't exactly have a heart to care. He pulled as it was a popping sound. Haku's eyes snapped open as he cried out. He tried to get away but the clone stomped on his back. Where is Gato hiding? Deku said. Leave the kid alone. Only I know where Gato is. Zabuza said. On the contrary, I know you do, but it's now clear that you care about this child. As he reached on a remove, Haku's mask, he grabbed his shoulder. No, stop. I'll tell you where he's staying. Just stop, said Zabuza. Wise decision, he dispelled his clone as he kicked Haku Han away. When he tried to throw some ice sand bonds, I thought we established that those are useless against me. Haku. Stand down, said Zabuza. He's staying far east away from here. His place is huge, surrounded by armed guards and attack dogs. You can't miss it. The stakes that were made from rock crumble as Zabuza fell down. For your compliance, I will not kill you. Your death will serve no purpose for my master. Know that I only left you alive because you may serve a purpose for my master. The both of you. Who, who are you? Haku whispered, I am Deku, the great master's loyal right hand. As he turned away, my master will reveal himself to you when he's ready. Just be ready to submit when he calls for you. With those bone chilling words, he blurred away. He summoned clones as they transformed into people. And their goal was to spread the word. Yes, spread the word that change was coming. Whispers around the town began after he dispelled his clones. Did you hear what that guy said? He said Wave is going to be saved. He said change is coming. I don't believe him. Gato is too powerful. The way he described this man. I'm not sure what to think. If a stranger say change is coming. I don't know about you but. I'm looking to believe whatever I can right now. What did he say? We should not inform the daimyo. I... I'm not sure. I don't know. The whispers were all around. With his job done, Deku ran towards Gato hideout. If he had a heart, what he saw would have sent him into a blind rage. They were females, young females being passed around. As he tried to summon the emotions that he saw his master had, as he frowned when he saw a larger man grab one of the girl's arm. The only reason why he aid the poor girls was because when he thought about it this is what Naruto Sama will do and also this will benefit Naruto Sama in the long run as he summoned his clones to go and kill the hired man outside the mercenaries did not even have time to blink as a solid stone stake was drive right through the back of their skulls the clones cover the girls mouth so they would not scream as they then knock them out and carry them away as he assigned a single clone to guard the girls, cast Nagenjutsu over them, so that they would stay asleep. The real Deku moved like a phantom. From what he could see the guards were over two dozens. Now there was two ways to exterminate this threat. He could plant bombs through this place, kidnap Gato, and blow the place up and pick off the survivors with his stakes. Or he could go in and assassinate whatever and take Gato head as proof of his death. As he ran both scenarios in his head, the chakra consumption for his stakes would wear him down and it would not be a clean job. So, 
Like a grotesque spider, he skittered along the wall. As he went from room to room, slaughtering those that were a threat, he found some unwilling prostitutes. He told them to head to the entrance. As he finally arrived to got to one drive, two stakes right through his back. He watched in satisfaction as the man died, drowning on his own blood. The next step was the daimyo. The poor daimyo did not even have enough security to pose, a threat to Gato so. He was easily dispatched. He had to kill the man because he was the one that introduced Gato to his own country. He was trying to use Gato to loot from his own people. But that plan backfired when Gato threatened him with the information as he would leak it to other daimyos, soiling his name. He found all that out after he had killed the daimyo. And now, he looked down towards both of the men. As he glanced up towards the people, he stood in the center of the village. His red eyes glowed so ominously that the people were unable to speak. They were worried. He created two stakes and drive them into both of their chests to show them that they were indeed dead. You hear the change, right? A dirty orphan said from the far back. I am part of the change, he said. Another part of the change concern this village and by clear extension, the country total submission. To who? One of them yelled. To my master. He has seen how this country will be in the future under proper governments. He wished to become the leader of this country. Anyone is better than those two. Someone shouted out. Perfect, he said as he unsealed a scroll. This is what my master wishes for you all to do before he can make himself known. Back in Kanoha, just as Deku was on his long mission, Naruto sat in the forest in his wheelchair. As he was sketching something in a notepad, it was a pattern of a swallow as he sketched it. His faithful Deku clones watching over him in the shadows. As he draw the bird, its beak, its feathers, Naruto pale skin now look rather healthy thanks to all the food that Deku had steal for him. But his hair could not go back to that vibrant look once again. But he was not picky how it looked so he didn't bother to dye it. A simple white shirt, baggy blue pants. His legs were bounded securely by a seat belt in case he had to defend himself unexpectedly. The drawing depict a bird, the phase that it went through before. It could take off into the sky. As he kept on humming and drawing, that is when he felt something. Yes, a tick on his wheelchair, signifying that someone had breached his alarm seals. The Deku clones did not intercept so he or she was not a threat. His suspicions were confirmed when, from the corner of his eyes, he noticed pupilless eyes watching him. Naruto act like he did not notice as he waited for the person to come out. An hour later, the person had still not revealed himself. Naruto made a single gesture with his finger to the closest Deku clone to her. It moved in and grabbed her before Hinata could even react as she was dropped in front of Naruto. The 12 year old girl scrambled to her feet. Her face red. Naruto did not even look at her. From the regular reports that he got, she was Hinata Hayuga, heiress to the clan. She had a confidence problem and daddy problems as well. Why are you here, Hayuga-san? Naruto asks. I, I, she stuttered. I have not seen you before, she said. I'm clearly not a threat, said Naruto. I, she was about to talk until Naruto cut her off. I do not need sympathy. Hinata fiddled with her fingers as she tried to change the topic. N nice weather we're having, she said. I agree. The weather is nice. Perfect for relaxing, he said. As she looked down to what he was drawing. It was majestic. That he made a common bird look like this was incredible. What's your name? If you don't mind me asking, he said. Um, Hinata Hayuga, she said. Naruto Uzumaki, said Naruto. She went in. Y you have a nice name, Naruto san she said. As she spoke with less of a stutter. Thank you. Now be honest with me. Why are you still here, Naruto asked. She tilted her head slightly. I, I don't understand, she said. This time he looked up. She had to step back because she had drawn too close from looking at his sketchbook. I obviously make you uncomfortable. And you're meant to be training with your team right now. 
How, how do you know, she said. I have been coming to this spot since I was nine. Whenever I have the time to draw. And a few months ago, your team made this. Your training grounds. I, I see, she said. Hinata. Where are you, Hinata? A voice called out. You are needed, it seems. Said Naruto as she ran towards the edge, but she came to a stop before she could leave his sight. Would, would I see you again, she asked. As Naruto shrugged, maybe when I'm less busy, he said. As he returned back to his kitchen. Curious girl, what do you think, Deku? From my boss's observation, she does not like to harm others. She has too soft a heart to be an effective shinobi. I know that, I meant. Do you think she should be a core part of my plans? It would be an enjoyable addition, Naruto-sama. A smirk came on Naruto's face. Yes, she would, he said. As he glanced towards the area that she had disappeared too. As he already had plans in his mind. Time skip. Naruto was currently looking over a map of the full scale of Nami no Kuni, Land of Wave. The Dark One had came back with good news. The people there did not put a fuss. When he claimed stakes over the village, he was outlining crucial parts of the village to place walls and seals on those walls. So the village would be protected against any attack. There were still several Deku clones that were currently in the country. Their purpose was to aid in the growth of the country. Houses, the ships for trading, loot in Gato and the Daimyo were houses. He was still patting himself on the back. The soil was rich there. There was abundance for growth and raw building. Yes, there was a lot of potential that it had. And he was glad that he noticed. The villagers were feeding off of Gato food storage, which will be enough to sustain him for a while. But he had to focus on security first before going too far. There was a lot to be done. Yes, a lot. As a smile was brought to his face. He would never become a ninja. That is what the old man has said to him. Yes, he could not become a ninja because he was too weak. He could never achieve what he aspired to be because his body could not handle it because he could not properly walk well screw being a ninja he would become a daimyo a leader he will make him regret those words but guys be in subscribe right here if you want to see the next person do like subscribe comment down below and turn on that bell of kiss as they posted so yeah don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over the other channels and I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them, but I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace.